everyone, welcome back to my random life. Okay, so obviously this is the review of my HD paddleboard from Boat. Um, I did try to do the audio while I was recording the video, but it was really windy out this day and just, you couldn't hear me over the wind and all the people that were screaming and playing around in the spring. So obviously, unfortunately, I am doing a voiceover. Right now I am at Alexander Springs getting my paddleboard set up. Uh, this is the HD Arrow by Boat in Pineapple Skull. I will have a link down in the description, so if you want to, you can go look at it. The dimensions of the board are 11 foot 6 inches long by 34 inches wide and 6 inches high. Yes, that is a very long board. But the minimum is for my height at five foot two is actually a foot shorter than this board. If you watched the unboxing video when I got this board about a month ago, I think, you know it what it came with. For those of you who didn't watch that video, the box actually came with obviously the board. It came with a three-piece paddle, a repair kit, a center fin, dual action pump, rack receivers, a paddle sheath, and a carry bag. As you saw while I was unpacking my board, in the main compartment I can fit the board, the three-piece paddle, and the dual action pump with the hose. The rack receivers and paddle sheath could fit in there, they are meant to be on the board. I just have not installed them yet. The only things that I keep in the front compartment on my carry bag are the repair kit and the center fin. Now, while my board fills up, let's look at some of the general pros and cons of a, your basic paddle board. For the pros, you're able to sneak up on fish and other wildlife a lot easier than you would be able to if you were using a motor of any kind, be it electronic or a gas motor. You can use the paddle boards for exercise or just leisure and get out of the house with them. You can even compete with them. Yes, they do have paddle board competitions, many different kinds. Um, you can meet new people and curious people about paddle boards wherever you go. They're absolutely everywhere. We pull up into the park and we just get flooded with people as we're filling them up. Um, another great pro about this, about paddle boards, you can go wherever boats with motors cannot go. Because you don't have a motor or a propeller to worry about. They're extremely easy to learn, and you can even have a carry sling to help you carry your board wherever you're heading. I personally do have one. There will be more about that later on. Obviously, as with anything, there are cons to paddle boards. Probably the biggest one is that the pack can be heavy. I know mine, when it is fully loaded, is about 50 pounds, but... It also does sit on your back like a backpack would, so you do have both shoulder straps that you can use. That makes it a little bit easier, but you really can't do much about the weight after that. Um, the manual pumping, which is what I'm doing with my board, it is tiring. They do offer electron or electric pumps, so that makes it easier. They just plug right into your car or into the wall. I believe they do have the adapter for that. They're pricey though. They generally have to be bought in addition to the board rather than coming with the board like mine came with this pump. Um, any light colors on your paddle boards will hold dirt. You really can't scrub it out either. It's just there. Also, the foam differs between companies and sometimes even between boards in the company. 
As you can see, I am starting to struggle with filling up my paddle board at this point. It's because I'm not filling up the board. I'm actually building pressure at this point. And at this point, it was also just beginning to register, which was a minimum of seven PSI to register on the board, uh, on the gauge. to go into the water. I actually have the pineapple skull board there, obviously. <laughs> you can see my paddle stuck in the front and it's actually attached in the back as well under the bungees there. I have my travel sling up on the side and I have my five gallon Kula cooler, which we just got on the back, as well as the center fin under the bungees until I get down to the water. Now the Kula cooler actually comes in two different sizes. You've got the two and a half gallon and the five gallon, which is the one that I've got. They also have hard cooler and a soft cooler. The soft cooler, they have one to match my board pattern, but the hard cooler was a steal for us. We actually got the Sweetwater Brewing model, which I believe is an old model since I haven't seen it on the website lately. Um, on the website, they sell for $200, and in stores, they sell for $200. We bought this used off Facebook for $75. It had gotten a new drain plug and new seals, and it came with a bottle opener attached. The ones that you buy new, do not come with the bottle opener. You have to buy that separately. So we definitely got a good deal on this Kula. Um, I have heard and seen reports of them holding ice for three days and the hard Kula can act as a seat, which you will see me using that. Uh, it can act as a cooler, a dry storage, a bait well, or anything else that you can use a five gallon bucket for, as quoted by boat. Now, specifically about my board, what do I like about it? Honestly, and this is me being 100% honest with you guys on this review, I never would give a false review about it. I absolutely love my board. I only have three main issues with my board and those will be stated next. Um, specifically, the best pros about my board, it's highly stable due to the 34 inch width. Super duper stable, I've yet to actually flip it. I had to jump off my board to practice getting back on it. It's extremely lightweight. It's only 30 pounds when it's fully inflated. It's got a high weight capacity, so up to 315 pounds. They do have boards on the website that will hold more, but I like the pineapple skulls, so I went with this one. It's also extremely easy to store. Like you saw, it 
packs right on up into that one bag and it's all done. It's easy to transport and it's long enough to add my 70 pound lab if I wanted to and if I can. Now there's really only three things that I have an issue with when it comes to my paddleboard. As a person that's five foot two, five foot three, it's hard to carry it by the center handle. Even with it only being a 34 inch total width, so a 17 inches down to the center handle, it actually pulls the skin on my arm, on the inside of my arm, and causes irritation and pain and rash right there. That's why I got the carry sling. But even with the carry sling, as short as it is, as short as it can go, the board is so nose heavy that picking it up with the travel link or the carry sling, it makes walking difficult because the nose dives to the ground. Since I can't shorten the sling any more anymore than what it already is, I actually have to put the sling off to the side of my arm so it's not even sitting properly, but that's to keep it from digging into my neck. And when I'm carrying the board by hand or even with the sling, it presses against my ribs so hard right at my bra line that I've actually got a couple of bruised ribs there now. So if you are looking at getting the travel sling because you're having trouble carrying your paddleboard, please make sure that you're going to be okay and that you can have, or that you have another way of carrying your board if the sling does not work. Yes, I was out with my husband and low budget enjoyment. Make sure to give his channel a quick check. Um, he is actually on the Flood Arrow, which is a different board from Boat. He loves it just as much as I love mine, but he does have some complaints about his board as well if you are looking at that. If you did watch the unboxing video that I posted, you know mine was over a thousand dollars after tax. His board was only about $850 after tax. So definitely a cheaper board, but still from the same great top of the line company. His complaints, um, he actually put the rack receivers in the day he got it just to see how it would look and check how comfortable it would be where he would be standing. When he went to take the rack receivers out, he actually had the foam tear right in front of one of them. We are in the process of fixing it. We have been in contact with Boat and they gave us suggestions on how to fix it. Um, another complaint that he's got is there is ex there's an excessive amount of dried glue around spots on the foam on his board. There's also loose threads on his carry bag. Some straps on the carry bag are actually separating from the bag itself. It's enough to where, enough to make him nervous about picking up the bag, even for just a quick moment, using those handles. Um, in addition, there's also two spots on the bottom of the nose that are soft until inflation of his board reaches at least 10 PSI. After that, they are super rigid, they're great, they're good to go, but that is something that Boat may also want to double check. He did say that he feels that overall quality control on the Flood Arrow seems poor, but other than that, it is a great board. It is a top of the line company things do slip through even with computers and other technology that we have. So it should be expected that once in a while something will slip through. We saw a couple other paddlers out today. One was actually on a different brand of inflatable paddleboard. The other was on a surfboard. 
Now, to inflate my board to a minimum of 10 PSI, which is the recommended minimum on the board, it takes me 5 minutes and 39 seconds. If I wanted the maximum 15 PSI, it's 12 minutes and 19 seconds. That is a big jump in just those 5 PSI, but it is well worth it. The more PSI in the board, the sturdier and stiffer the board is making it easier to do exercises. To get set up and ready for the water at 13 PSI, which is where I was at today on the board, it takes me eight minutes and 30 seconds. And that's everything from unzipping the pack to completely putting the board in the water, getting on it, going out. And the full breakdown and packed up to leave obviously is going to be faster than most of the um, inflation times. Full pack up, including completely folded, is 11 minutes and 6 seconds. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this week's video. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I will answer everything I can as fast as I can. Until next week, have a random day, and I'll see you guys later.